I think soulful sleep is just being content with how you're sleeping and how you feel during the day. So you don't feel so pressured or worried about it. It happens and you let it happen and it feels calm and it feels restorative. Congratulations, you're on the last day of the Sleep Masterclass, your journey to soulful sleep with Dr. Shelby Harris. Wow, it's been a ride. I've learned a lot, actually. Good. I'm, I'm really, uh, I thought I knew a lot about sleep, but <laughs> that's always that you think you know a lot until you speak with an expert. What do you actually, now that we've concluded it, how would you describe soulful sleep? I think soulful sleep is just being content with how you're sleeping and how you feel during the day. So you don't feel so pressured or worried about it. It happens and you let it happen and it feels calm and it feels restorative. When you feel like that's happening at night, it helps to influence your day in a much more positive way. Body, mind, soul. I think when that all lines up, you're on the right journey. I think that's the best description yet. I couldn't have said it better, so thank you for that. <laughs> um, what do you think the three golden nuggets are from this whole masterclass? So the three things that I love to, I mean, we talked about so much stuff, but the three biggest things that I always stress to everybody is the number one thing is consistency. So really try to keep a consistent bedtime and a consistent wake time as often as possible. So even if you have really bad nights of sleep multiple times, really try to get up at around the same time every day as often as you can, because consistency is key to help set your body clock. The other two big things that I always like to stress are we talked a lot about morning. So the morning is super important for influencing the night. So that getting up at the same time, but also making sure you move your body a little bit. You get light exposure. That's also super yeah. important in the morning. And then at nighttime, it's about sleep not being an on-off switch. You need to wind your body down, treat it like it's a dimmer switch, dim the lights, do some time to quiet your brain, quiet your body to set the stage for sleep and do it in smaller chunks if you have to. So start with five, 10 minutes, then move towards a half hour or an hour before bed to really wind your body down to help prepare for sleep. Yeah, that's one thing that maybe we didn't discuss is that of course you have that, uh, it takes you throughout the day. You mm -hmm. start with the morning and uh, maybe you do meditation just an hour before you go to bed or uh, yeah. you take a bath one and a half hours before you go to bed to help your body and mind unwind. But isn't it also true that during the day, because we have such hectic lives, that we should take that moment to relax? And how do you do that? Let's say, you know, you, you have a, a sort of a hectic uh, week schedule or day schedule, mm -hmm. and you can't really uh, walk out for half an hour to uh, sniff some air or uh, see some light. What can you do to relax during the day to just Everyone's different with what's relaxing for them. So what's relaxing for me of sitting, going for a little walk, if I don't have even 10 minutes to go outside, I find that just moving my body is helpful. So if I have a, I'm lucky that I have a treadmill in my basement. So sometimes just going and walking for two minutes on my treadmill just quiets my body. But for other people, it could be something like doing a little bit of coloring, just sitting, just sitting, watching TV for 15 minutes, if that's just a mental break. Whatever you can do to that, just at least be mindful of where you are in the moment, that's not going, 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 is perfect. So just find something that works for you, even for a minute or two. Yeah, just balance your day. Yes. And then the rest will be uh, like balancing your night as well. Exactly. Out. So I, you said that there were a lot of things that you learned in this masterclass. I'm curious, what were some of the top things for you that really stuck out? Well, I think the, first of all, what really hit me was that women sleep so much worse than men yeah. at some stage in their lives. I didn't realize that at all. And um, that you can basically overcome it naturally, that you don't always need sleep medicine. I think another big uh, take out for me was uh, to clear your mind, yeah, to make your, like you described it as just, to make time for your worry moment, mm -hmm. to unload all the things that are busying you and, and make sure that your mind is at least not so su super hyperactive when you go to bed. And the other one was that 50% um, of people experience sleep problems. I had no clue it was that big and that 15% actually battle with sleep disorders, which is mind-blowing to me. With insomnia. 
just 15% is insomnia. And then you think about all the other sleep disorders. It's even more then. Even yeah. More. So insomnia is only 50. Yeah. And I think that that's huge. I mean, mm -hmm. if you realize that sleep is the way you recharge, you revitalize yourself, you relax, you well do all the things that allow you to take you into the day, then it's really a shame if, if people don't start transforming their lives with new habits, new routines, and make sure that their sleep habits are transformed. Sounds to me like you've graduated from the sleep masterclass. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a wonderful journey and, um, well, I hope we uh, can do a follow-up. I would love it. This has been wonderful. Thank you. Thanks.